Hi everyone, Bandana here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. If you watched this week's Modded Monday that was all about the complex EVO mod for Homeworld Remastered, you probably know what this video is all about, and that is Era 1. This is a game being made by the team behind the complex mods, both for Homeworld 2 and Homeworld Remastered, and they also had a hand in the remastering of Homeworld itself. They've since gone on using all of their skills and knowledge to start creating their own game called Era 1, which from some videos about eight months ago looks pretty advanced. They had a Kickstarter last year, which I sadly missed, as I only found out about the game while I was looking into the complex Evo mod and what had happened to the team. So what you see in the background is their video that they posted about eight months ago. I really hope they don't mind me reposting it as part of this video, but I just wanted to say that recently they put a post up on the 6th of March, just saying we're focused on development, we're sorry we've not had much communication, and thank you everyone for wishlisting on Steam. And obviously I would encourage anyone who's interested to go and wishlist on Steam, it's obviously very important to the developers these days, just as it's very important for me if people subscribe to the channel and like the video and stick a comment on it, because it's all about these metrics these days. Anyhow, in the rest of this development update, they sort of talk about the success of the Kickstarter campaign and how they plan to release Build 4 at the end of March, which is gone now. I think the intention is that that would be released to the Kickstarter backers. That was also going to introduce Unity's DOTS, or Data Orientated Tech Stack, and complete transition to the HDRP, High Definition Render Pipeline. These are things that make games run a lot better in Unity, and it's the same technology that Sanctuary Shattered Sun is using. They're aiming for a release date in September to October 2024 into Early Access with Playerverse AI and also a sandbox mode followed shortly by multiplayer support. The campaign will require more time and budget, so while the game is prepared to handle it, it's the final sort of focus to be introduced in the subsequent release of the game out of early access. And they go on to say that they're aiming for an uncompromising game with the highest quality and detail and are limiting their content creation to focus on the quality of what currently exists in the game while reserving time for later in the development cycle to add new features. So they can focus on making a game that works and then add things later. And I think that's really good because one of the things you find with some of these small dev teams is what we call feature creep. You'll have heard this term before perhaps, and that's where they keep wanting to add new features and they get so bogged down in adding these features, they never finish the features they had before, and therefore never end up with a finished game, and end up with a load of unfinished features, and then run out of money and just release the game in the state it is. So the way these guys are going about it is much more sensible. And the real question is, is this the home world we deserve? So while their trailer continues to run in the background, I just want to talk about some of the stuff that's on the Steam page and the website. For example, they already have a story worked out for the entire thing. So from the ashes of a shattered universe, a young woman's quest for salvation sparks a journey of intrigue, danger and discovery. So in a future where Earth's resources were depleted, humanity embarked on the great colonization, expanding to other planets. The rise of mining corporations led to conflicts and the emergence of space piracy. A wealthy magnet discovered a powerful energy source, leading to the construction of the Navi Mondo, enormous fortified self-sustaining cities in space, and also to the formation of the Free Federation of Worlds. Centuries passed and the population was pushed to abandon the planets, living only on the Navi Mondo. However, genetically engineered biominers mutated and posed a threat. With resources nearing exhaustion, the Free Federation planned to migrate using hyperspace leap technology. The colonization ships Vitrix and X Gemina encountered a gravitational anomaly, causing a breach. Chaos ensued as resources depleted, wars resumed, and the political system collapsed. Alaya Dishares sought to steal a power source to launch a secret ship and start anew. This sets the stage for the story of humanity's struggle, the rise and fall of an empire, and the hope for a fresh beginning beyond the solar system. And they mention here, just about the soundtrack, they asked Alberto Salvaggi to read Era One's lore and compose based solely on his interpretation 
and years of passion for music and piano. The result is a unique and emotionally touching soundtrack that will accompany us throughout the story, adding depth and making everything deeply engaging. Music can genuinely make a game, especially in a space game where there's not a huge amount going on other than the ships and things you're seeing, so the music really sets the atmosphere. So I'm really pleased they've gone down that route with it. An example of this would be one of the most iconic things for me from my childhood, and that I always remember, is the main theme of the original X Beyond the Frontier game, because that for me sets the tone for that game. Anyhow, I digress down memory lane. So, there's going to be base building in the game as well, so they plan extensive base customization. It will offer a wide range of options for base construction and customization. Players can design and build their bases from scratch, choosing the layout, structures, and aesthetics to suit their playstyle. And you can see some of that in the video that's been running in the background. There's also resource management, so building and maintaining a base requires effective resource management. Players must gather, manage the resources such as raw materials, energy sources and workforce to construct and upgrade their bases. A proper allocation of resources is essential for the growth and sustainability of the base, ensuring its survival in the game world. There will be defensive structures and strategies, so they must be fortified against external threats. Players can construct defensive structures such as turrets and traps to protect their base from enemy attacks. Choosing the right defensive strategy, positioning defenses strategically and upgrading them over time are crucial aspects of base building in the game. Research and technological advancement. As players progress in Era 1, they can unlock and research new technologies to enhance their base building capabilities. Advancements in areas such as construction techniques, resource extraction and defensive systems provide players with additional options for base expansion and fortification. And again, I'm really pleased they've gone down this route of having the base building in there because not every game does these days. And that applies especially to space games. Most space games these days, you just get a fleet that you start with and then you engage them. And it's all very good and tactical, but it's nice that they've gone back to that sort of homeworldy sort of thing where you maybe don't have the mothership, but you have a main base station instead. Of course, this wouldn't be a homeworld style game without having the ships as well, and they're going to have vast starship customization options, a wide array of ship customization allowing players to design and personalize their vessels. Players can choose from different ship types, sizes, and aesthetics, customizing various aspects such as hull design, paint schemes, and exterior decorations. This level of customization allows players to create unique and visually distinct ships that reflect their individual style. Modular ship components, so the ships in Era 1 are built using a modular component system, offering players the flexibility to tailor their ships for specific roles and functions. Players can select and install various modules, such as propulsion systems, weapon systems, cargo holds, and utility modules, based on their playstyle and objectives. And the modular nature of the ship's components enables players to experiment with different configurations, and optimize their ships for exploration, combat, trading, and other specialized tasks. And if that wasn't enough for you, the ship systems will also be upgradable. So as you progress through the game, you can acquire new technology and upgrade the ship's systems to enhance their performance. Upgraded systems can include engines for speed, shields for improved defense, weapons for enhanced firepower, and scanners for better exploration capabilities. And the last big tagline for their game is Epic Battles. They're aiming for thrilling and intense ship-to-ship -ship battles in a vast and immersive space setting. Players can engage in dynamic combat scenarios including dogfights, tactical fleet battles and strategic encounters with enemy vessels. The game provides a variety of combat mechanics such as manual piloting, attacking styles and battle formations to ensure there are engaging battles. They're planning to have a diverse array of weapons, a lot of which I think are probably already in the game, which will include energy-based cannons, projectile-based missiles, laser beams, and more. Each weapon type will have its own strengths, weaknesses, and tactical uses, providing players with strategic choices for ship loadouts and combat styles. Obviously, some stuff's going to be long-range, short-range, effective against different types of ships. I guess in that sense, we're going to get something homeworld-ish. Then there will be tactical maneuvering and positioning, so players must take strategic decisions regarding their ship's movement, approach, and defensive measures to gain an advantage over their opponents. And then they backtrack to that customization of everything, where you can obviously change your offensive and defensive capabilities by installing better weapons, upgrading shields and armor, improving the maneuverability, 
Basically, the ability to tailor it all to your playstyle. Okay, so let's be completely fair here. What I've just read out is, to some extent, a lot of marketing bump. You know, the wording is done in a certain way to promote certain stuff. But let's be fair to this team. They have done an amazing job with these mods over the years. They have the know-how and knowledge. Obviously, there's a big difference here. They're working from scratch on this. They're not utilizing someone else's pre-existing game. So the work that has to go into it and the process is obviously going to be a lot different. But from what you can see in this video, it looks like they're fairly advanced. And obviously at this stage of development, it's about getting all those systems in place and then the balancing and everything can come later. Now, my only concern with this game is simply that there isn't really any footage of it other than what the team have put out themselves. It's not like any other bigger YouTubers have got their hands on the game and been able to play a demo themselves. Everyone just seems to be utilising the video like I have here. I really hope that that will change soon, especially if they've actually managed to put this version 4 into the hands of some players. Because even just to be able to show off that the menu systems and everything actually work in the game would be fantastic. I'm hopeful that since they gave us an update last month on Steam that maybe they're heading towards doing a new video because this one is eight months old. So it's looking amazing, the concept is fantastic and the team certainly have the pedigree for this type of game. But outside of the dev team, there's just not really any information about people playing it or what they think of it or what the mechanics are like or anything. And even from the dev team, there's obviously not a lot. So this one's a bit of a wait and see, but I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention because, you know, maybe it is the homeworld we deserve, just in case they don't manage to pull it off with Homeworld 3, because that still remains to be seen. Let me know down in the comments if you've seen this game before, if you've somehow managed to play it from the Kickstarter and what you think of it. If you're allowed to, obviously don't break any non-disclosure agreements that may be in place. But I will stick a link down to the Steam page down below and please do go over and stick a wish list on if it's something that interests you. Just because, you know, all of these metrics help people and if they're looking for an investor to help them finish the game, that's how they're going to do it. As ever, thank you very much for watching everyone. Please do like, share and subscribe. I'll see you all soon.